up guys? We got another great spot here in North Georgia, right on the creek, and today we want creek crook, crook, whatever you want to call it. Um, today we want to show you guys how to set up a campsite and all the things you need to set up your RVs. So if you're a first time RVer and you just don't know the items that you need to set up your RV rig, because most dealerships don't come with all the parts you need, we're going to go through all the things that you must have on the first day. Some of these things could be convenience items, but some things are must have items. So I think the first thing that's a must have item is wheel chocks. Wheel chocks are important because you don't want your RV rolling away. You're going to want to chalk front and back of one side of the tire, which is on the ground. So that is number one tip for something that you're going to need. And that's just getting the thing, the RV home and putting it in the driveway. You're going to want to chalk these wheels because there's no other brakes on this thing. So very important item. These are pretty cheap ones. However, you can get pretty expensive ones too. So depending on your budget, definitely get the best you can get. All right, guys, another item that you're probably going to want to invest in are some of these blocks that go under your landing pads, whether you have a tongue jack on a travel trailer, stabilizers, or whatever. This is just gets your camper off the ground. It's not a must-have item, but it's a nice-to-have item, and it's something you definitely going to want to grab along the way. So we have plenty of these blocks. They're good for leveling as well and just getting everything stable so you don't sink in the mud or soft surfaces. So leveling blocks are definitely a must-have. All right, so getting your rig level is pretty important because it makes all the slides operate properly. You don't have to roll off the bed in the middle of the night, things like that. So we ended up going with, uh, these are similar to the Anderson levelers, which you'll see a lot of people talk about. But these are actually the beach nut. They're a little bit cheaper, just as good as quality. You don't need these right away. These are a little pricey. You could get those orange blocks that I showed you for the stabilizers and just roll up on those. But these are pretty convenient, something that might be worth looking into. So that's just an item that you'd want to consider having. Um, definitely some sort of level, even if it's a wooden block for now. Again, this is not something you need right away, but it's a nice to have item. So. All right, guys, whether you have a 50 amp or a 30 amp trailer, most of this is going to apply to both sides. Just going to be different size components. Uh, another valuable item, this is, this is a controversial item. A lot of people say that they don't need them. A lot of people say you shouldn't use, shouldn't RV without it, but that's some sort of surge protector. Uh, we use the Progressive Industries 50 amp, these also come with 30 amp, and ours has the cover on it, so this is something that if you don't want to fry your air conditioner, your fridge, your electronics, highly recommend it, because some of the campgrounds out there, they just don't have stable electricity, so getting some sort of surge protection can be vital. All right, your RV should have come with a power cord. We have a 50 amp, a lot of the 50 amps, because they're so heavy duty, are going to be an external cable. Uh, a lot of your 30 amp RVs are just going to have it inside somewhere where you pull the cord out. So this is something that's going to be typically with your RV and make sure when you buy it that they provide it or, you know, if it didn't come with one, this is something you're going to have to get, whether it's 30 amp or 50 amp. So that's the next item and hooking up the power is generally the first thing that we do. Alright guys, we are in a coal hookup site. This has uh, 20 amp, 30 amp, and 50 amp hookups, which is awesome for us for a 50 amp RV, so it's pretty cut and dry. Obviously, you generally want to keep the circuit breaker off, plug your circuit protector in, check the surge protectors are going to give you a readout, whether or not you have a good circuit. So ours is indicating that it's a good circuit right now. The green and the blues should be lit if everything's polarity is correct. Uh, there's no ground issues, anything like that. So that's a correct and it's safe for us to plug in our RV. Okay, so we are set. One item that I like to do, just because these surge protectors are pretty expensive, is get some sort of locking system. They have a little lock, little hook here, eyelet, that I can lock this. Even if there's no way to attach it, just putting something around and putting a lock on it might deter people from stealing this. I'm not saying people are stealing stuff, but people are stealing stuff. So just the fact that it looks like this, and if there's any type of other hook that you can hook this to, 
book is going to deter people from stealing this $150 surgery tanker. So, nice little trick. Not a must have, but it's just an extra step that I like to say. You know the campground you're going to, and it's the only one you always go to. These are good things to have with you as well, and those are adapters. So if you have a 30 amp RV and you never know where you're going to go, maybe they only have a 50 amp plug, you're going to need what's called a dog bone, which is going to take your 30 amp to a 50 amp adapter. So that's going to allow you to hook a 30 amp to that. If you're parking at your home or mooch docking in somebody's driveway, this is a 30 amp to 110 adapter. So this will plug into a regular household plug and allow your 30 amp RV. And if you have a 50 amp, we have a 50 amp, the 30 amp adapter, which we can plug into this, plug into a house, or if we get into a spot where they don't have 50 amps available, which is quite common, uh, we can convert our 50 amps to 30 amp plug and actually plug in up here. So just having a couple of these um, converters with you when you're on the road and you're going to different campgrounds, you don't know what you're going to run into, these are pretty vital to have. So. I'll definitely invest in the different conversions that they have. We'll link all the stuff below. So the next thing we're going to hook up is our water. And there's a couple things that you're going to want with the water system. You're going to want a drinking quality hose. We go with the Zero G because it's flexible and you can see it goes into a very small tote. Um, not something you need to spend the big bucks on right away, but I think if you're going to spend the money on a good water hose, Get the zero G. These are highly recommended. So something you really want to consider right out of the gate is getting some sort of water pressure regulator. Now they have pretty cheap ones like we have or they have adjustable ones that get a little bit more expensive. But sometimes you run in a situation where the water pressure is just so high and these RV, the plumbing in these RVs just isn't that great to be honest with you. Uh, you don't want to leak. So we have ours mounted right here. I also put a 90 degree elbow right at our connection and we put these quick connects because screwing in your water line all the time, again this is not something you need right away, but it's just a convenience item for us to quickly connect like that to connect our water line. So for us it comes from the drinking water hose into a quick connect, into the water pressure regulator, into a 90 and into the water supply. So that is our RV side, and then we have a filter here, the RV filter to filter any of the water. And then we have our Berkey inside to get their drinking water. So that's how we hook up our water. And on the other side, I always like to use one of these Y connectors, and this is the drinking water version. You gotta make sure you don't get the ones with the lead in them. This allows you to hook up your drinking water continuously and then also have the extra hose for washing things down. We have a tank flush, so that's where I put the black tank hose because I don't want to mix the two uh, at the rig. So this goes on the water supply. And the second hose, again, we have just a regular flexible hose. This is not drinking water. This is generally for our black tank for any use around the campsite that we need water. We'll also hook this guy up. Okay, and then for us, we have a black tank flush on our RV, not all travel trailers or RVs have them, but that's why we have this. It's the on off switch. Again, I have a quick connect on this as well. And this is our black tank flush. So when we go to flush the black tank, right here we just do a quick connection and we're good to go. All right, a couple other things that we have in our water bin is what's called the water bandit. This guy, if you're somewhere where like a state park and they don't have a faucet that you can screw your water line to, this guy will actually go over like a pump handle or, or any type that's not threaded, sticks it on there, you hook up your water hose and you can get water from multiple sources. So it's just to fill your tanks, um, not something you must have, but it's a pretty cool little device to have with you. We also have a spray nozzle on hand just to hose things down and clean things, clean the truck and so forth. So that's a great thing to have. And we have some other hoses for filling our fresh water tank, which are going to be unique to your situation. All right, guys, other things we have with our power. We, we have bins for everything. So we have our water supply bin, we have our power bin, and then we have our black tank bin, our sewer line. Um, I like to keep just a little six-way plug in case we're outside, we want to hook up a fan or other devices outside, so that's a great thing to have. Uh, if we are in a 30 amp, this was from our old 
30 amp, so there are cheaper versions of the surge protectors that you can get. Um, this is something you might not think about, but we keep a length of coaxial cable just in case you're at somewhere where they have cable TV. This is great to hook up to a campground cable TV. So keep maybe 20 to 50 feet of coaxial cable, hook up at different campgrounds. So that's come in handy with that. All right, now we're on the dreaded sewer hose connection. And I get it, this is pretty scary for a lot of people that are new to it, but as long as you have the right things, it's gonna be fine. Number one, probably a box of gloves. Um, we keep some hand sanitizer on hand. I keep some spray disinfectant so I can disinfect items. And this is our bin of sewer connections. First thing we have is a clear elbow. And clear elbow is important so you can see once everything's done running out, and you can see, you know, if the water's clean coming out of there. So first connection. That. And ours has a flush as well, so if you want to flush out your system from here, we can do that or flush out the hose. Second set is we bought the Rhino. Uh, two section, two ten foot section kit, and so far it's done great for us. So we connect those. And in the kit, you have your sewer adapter and a 90. Again, it's clear, so again, you can see what's coming in and out of the the hose. We also grabbed a donut. We haven't used this yet, but there are some places where you don't have the threaded connection. So this would make a nice seal if you just have an open connection sewer line, and that's required by some jurisdictions. So a donut something you might want to consider having on hand just in case. A pair of channel locks are going to be very important. A lot of times these connections are seized up pretty good. This one's open, but we've gotten to a place where somebody really cranked this down. So you're going to want a set of channel locks be able to get on here and open this connection. Well, you look at that, we get to use our donut for the first time. Uh, this thread just aren't, somebody must have cross-threaded them at some point, so they're not biting. But normally you're going to be able to thread this right into your four-inch opening, and you're going to have a nice tight seal. In this case, we're going to use this donut, seat it in there, and then see their sewer connection in there as well. So that's nice and tight. Not and tight? Not and tight. A lot of places where you're going to camp, they require the sewer hose to be off the ground. So this is a pretty vital piece to get right away. Uh, I mean, you can make something out of, I've seen people use gutters and whatever, but this is pretty universal because you can stretch this out and it provides a ramp for your sewer hose to give you the proper flow. So we'll set that up next. All right, so in this situation, it's not gonna be ideal because of the height of the drain. However, this is going to work for most off-flow, and then when you're done, you're just going to have to lift the hose and kind of force the, the water down toward the drain. It's a little bit inconvenient, but you're going to run into all different circumstances. So, sidewinder is going to help. It would, if there was an ordinance to keep it off the ground, it would cover that. Uh, however, again, just the height of this drain, we, uh, we're going to have some issues down there. But, again, not a big deal, and we'll, uh, we'll be able to clear that line once we disconnect. So more or less, this is the basics of connecting your RV to a full hookup site. You have your electric, you have your water, you have your sewer, you have your leveling blocks, and pretty much what we're showing you here are the items that we definitely recommend that you guys grab. We'll leave links to all this. We also have a kit that we keep all these items in so people who are starting out um, know what to get. All right, so Sabrina's laughing at me behind the camera. It's time to wrap up the video. 
Uh, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel and follow along our journeys. And if there's anything else that we can help you guys out with, again, leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. And we'll see you guys on the road. See you on the next one, guys.